Assalamu alaikum and a very good day to everyone of you. Today I'm going to show you how to find the discrete integration for any discrete signal using Simulink, but without using the built-in discrete integrator. Um, well, the equation that I depend on is found in this Wikipedia article. I'm going to place the link uh, for it in a description below. You may check it out. Well, the left hand side, it's actually placed here. This one is actually the continuous uh, time integration equation. And the below one is its discrete counterpart. As delta t is the sample period, it is a constant. We may put it out of this summation as we have done here. This means that the integration is the sample period multiplied by the summation of the signal itself, our signal that we want to find the integration for. If, if we want to expand this uh, summation, we can simply evaluate this equation for the first sample time, which is 1, as we have done here. And then we multiply it by the sample time. Then we add uh, the value of the first sample by the next samples starting from 2 here as we have taken the first one so this kind of operation is cumulative so we need to add again and again until we reach the last sample let's see that in simulink well you need to create a new file simulink file and to place a few blocks depending on this equation here uh, f of t is actually the input signal and in this tutorial I'm going to use this sign signal and you may use any input signal you may be interested in we also need a constant for this sample period constant and this constant is actually the sample period 0.01 that means the sampling frequency is 100, 1 over this value. And we also need a product to multiply these values. A product blocked to find the multiplication. We may also place a summation block. And for the monitoring purposes, I'm going to use a scope. Well, for the sake of comparison between the result that we get from this equation, I'm going to place two more blocks, the uh, built-in integrator, the continuous one, and the discrete time integrator. Well, here is our input signal. I'm going to find the discrete integration for it and feed this output to this scope since we have three outputs one is for the continuous one the second is a discrete output found by the built-in block and the third is by our output I'm going to use three inputs to this to this scope it's cool and then the same signal is going to be connected to this discrete time integration block I think that's all I need to specify the frequency for the sign signal itself I'm going to say that it's 2 pi multiplied by 0 0.5 um, it's important to specify the uh, solver for the for simulink so all you need to do is to go to simulation configuration parameters and from there you can specify the solver so that you may get better results this is the one um, it's a fixed step one and the solver is going to be ODE1 Euler um, here the default frequency that we need I mean the sampling frequency is 0.01 okay that's pretty pretty great um, well we need to change the sample time in here the sample time is zero well that's the one that we need because the first 
the first one is actually continuous and the sample time for a continuous signal is zero so we keep it as it is but for the second discrete time integration we need to specify the sample time as negative one and this means that it will take the default value of the sampling time that is used by Simulink and we have already specified it in the configuration parameters but we've forgotten to place the frequency as the continuous one 0 0.5 let's check that out mm -hmm. let me see what's a pro uh -huh. we need to specify the the sample time in here too well the sample time is 0 0.01 as it is a discrete time function um, and block okay as you can see that both of the plots are almost similar and there are some tiny differences which can be seen when we zoom in a little okay for the first one you can see that it is continuous but for the second plot it's clear that it is discrete okay that's so logical because for the first integration we used only um, continuous time integration okay now let's create our own integration um, as already discussed we need to multiply the sample time by the function itself which is the sine wave so here is the multiply block we bring in this connection and we multiply it by the sample uh, constant sample time um, well this is for a single um, multiplication how about the rest suppose that the simulation is running um, at the beginning it evaluates uh, this for the first sample time we need to have a block to save this first um, summation I mean multiplication so we can put the unit delay block here is the unit delay block which stores the previously calculated multiplication which is this one now I'm going to flip this block format and flip the block okay that's even great and um, the output of this unit delay is to be added again to the second sample time okay so we can delete this place this one here and this is the one so at the beginning the unit delay block is going to have a zero value which is the initial condition specified by us and normally our system is having zero initial conditions that's why we have set it to zero okay for sample number one at the beginning this is zero and the output here is merely this product and then this output is stored here for the second sample time the output here is actually the previously calculated one and it's added with the second sample multiplication and so and so on so this would be our integration okay I think that's everything I'm going to zoom in I'm going to run the simulation okay isn't that cool that's cool actually it's clear that the three plots are almost similar the second and the third are supposed to be discrete and that's what we see here okay this is discrete and this is also discrete if you want to zoom more like to this sample you can see that it, both of them are discrete but there are slight differences between the second and the third and this is due to the method that is used to calculate the integration here in the discrete time integration the forward order method is used you may choose other methods from this list here 
But our approach might work very well and perform very well for um, a lot of purposes, like in systems using microcontrollers where integration is needed. You may um, download this file from the link below. Thank you very much for watching.